Ah, uh, and we are live! Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We have a great show for you today, as always. We are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash takesbyfans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we're on podcasting apps, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, folks, however you want to watch. Or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today is a big old Wednesday. Usually during Wednesdays in our NFL season, we do a Wednesday film study, and we're kind of going to be doing that really for the rest of the week. I mean, um, you know, what better way to kind of predict this Super Bowl than to watch the game? These two teams played in week 12, so that's what we're going to do for the next four days watch the entire game. We're going to be watching a quarter of that game for the next four days, folks. Today is going to be first quarter, second quarter tomorrow, third quarter Friday, fourth quarter on Saturday, and hopefully we'll have enough information by then. Um, I know we, I, I kept saying throughout the week that we were going to kind of look at the line and kind of tell y'all if we're still big on this Chiefs team. So we are going to definitely be doing that today. Let's recheck the line. We haven't checked it in a couple of days. So where is the public betting? Is everybody taking Mahomes or are people taking the Brady plus three? So. We'll get an update on the line, tell you guys if we're still feeling big on the Chiefs, and then we'll be watching the game. What did the Chiefs do well? What did the Bucks do well? What did the Chiefs do well in that first game that the Bucks couldn't stop? What did the Bucks do in that first game that the Chiefs couldn't stop? And we'll see, are these teams still doing the same things? You know, I mean, this was week 12 when they first met. Now we're in week, you know, 17, 18, 19, almost week 20. Is that is that right? So, you know, eight weeks ago, they faced... They had eight weeks to prepare. Who's going to make all the adjustments? So hopefully we can see something in the film study. So that's what we got today on the show. Obviously still breaking down basketball and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's jump right into our stories. And since it's Super Bowl week, folks, let's keep it up. We were looking at the previous Super, Bowl, Super Bowls the last two days. So let's uh, today's Super Bowl, we're doing uh, 2008 Brady versus Eli Manning. And we got the drive right here, folks. The drive that cost Tom Brady a ring. Here we go. We get to watch Eli Manning. This is the helmet catch David Tyree. Eli Manning flings it up we'll watch it when it gets here flings it up and just pins it to his helmet and it's a catch and then they go on and convert with the touchdown so here we go Eli Manning on this drive so far you know two of two picking up huge third down conversions absolutely clutch and then we get a fourth and one right here and who do they go to who do the Giants go to Oh, yes, they pick it up on fourth and one. And who, who do we got here? Who do we got? Number 27, Brandon Jacobs. Y'all remember him? Absolutely clutch here. He gets not a lot of credit for the Super Bowl. But, hey, on fourth and one, he doesn't pick it up. They don't win. There's no chance. There's less than you know a minute and 28 seconds left. So they pick up the first down. Eli Manning steps up in the pocket, rushing, picks up about five yards. I mean, just crazy how every play here contributed to the David Tyree catch. We see Eli Manning fumble right here. This could have went south if he really lost this fumble. If Brandon Jacobs doesn't pick up that first down, we don't get that helmet catch, folks. Here we go. Eli Manning on second and five. Almost a pick. Almost a pick, folks. Everything was going right for this Giants team. A lot of lucking out here for this Giants team. And I know Brady re-watching this, his blood is boiling, folks. And now here we get it. Eli Manning just escapes the pocket. How the hell does he do that? Winds up, throws it downfield. Third and five. It's complete. The helmet catch is finally arrived in this game. Let's watch it one more time here oh my god oh my goodness how the heck do you do that and how the hell does Eli Manning not get brought down right here how is that not a sack and then you get the most famous play one of the most famous plays in all of NFL with the helmet catch this is honestly it's it's crazy folks this re-watching this game is so crazy Everything was going right for this Giants team on this drive. Everything. Even this. Even the catches. All right. So now after that helmet catch, how does Eli Manning capitalize on this drive? He's going to scramble out. And once again, only, you know, gets brought down. Does he even get a yard here? Is this a sack? What do they call it? Maybe picked up one yard on this run. 50 seconds left. 
Eli Manning down four, third and 11 at the 26-yard line. Picks up a first down. I don't even know who that is. Smith? Don't know who that Giants receiver is. But, hey, he made a great catch. Picked up the first down. Got out of bounds. 39 seconds left. Eli Manning wide open, folks. Wide open. Is that Plexico Burris, folks? Plexico Burris with the game-winning touchdown here. Absolutely magnificent. I mean, Eli Manning, he's wide open. He's wide open. Just got to give it to him. Just got to get the ball there, and he does it. So what a drive here. The picking up fourth and one, the not getting the interception, escaping the pocket on that David Tyree catch. David Tyree actually catching the ball. Then we get Smith there on the first down, and then we get uh, Plexico Burris with the actual capitalization of the touchdown. So Brandon Jacobs and Plexico Burris need more um, need more clout, more recognition for what they did in this game. Yes, Tyree caught the ball, but that was only third and eleven. They don't get it. They you know it's fourth down. They still get another chance. Uh, it's that fourth and one. It's the touchdown. So if you see them today, shout them out a little bit. Give them a little bit. Hey, you know what? You did a lot in that 2008 Super Bowl too. We remember. We remember. <laughs> uh, so that was our Super Bowl of the day. Here we go. Let's keep going on with the stories. And just once again here, just this helmet catch. Look at this still frame. The still frame, just pinning it. Just the back half of his football is in the hand. Half of this football is on nothing. How does this ball just not squeak out of his hands? How does the defender not knock the ball out? Man, oh, man. Man, oh, man. Look at this, folks. Look at that. Look at that. Half the, look, half the ball. Half the ball is just on nothing. On nothing. Insane. Absolutely insane. What's the last picture? <laughs> and then the defender. The defender's like, hey, what? What the hell? How do you catch this? He caught this? Damn. So <laughs> that's the uh, the helmet catch, folks. There it is. All righty. And I'm a little disappointed in this. Atlanta looking to run it back. Julio Jones and Matt Ryan not expected to be traded. What, what happened? You know, Arthur Blank, right after the season ended, he's like, you know what? Everybody's for sale. You know, nobody's safe. We're trading everybody potentially. Um, that's got us thinking, you know, Deshaun Watson to Atlanta would be a perfect fit. That's where I want to see him go. But, um, you know, they're going to run it back with Matt Ryan. I think they kind of reached their ceiling with Matt Ryan. I don't like him in the red zone. I really don't even like him past midfield. I don't think he makes those clutch throws. He doesn't lead you to team or to wins late in the fourth quarter. I don't really see any of that from him. And he's got great wide receivers, and it's still not working. So I really don't like buying into Matt Ryan for another year, wasting another year of Julio Jones' prime here, especially with rising Calvin Ridley. Now he's starting to get into his prime you know, three seasons into, you know, his career. And, you know, Matt Ryan, once again, could be wasting a year of his prime as well. I just want to see Deshaun Watson with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. That is a Super Bowl team. They will beat the Bucs. They will get to the Super Bowl and have to face the Chiefs most likely next season. And I don't know who wins in that game, but it would be a good one. So uh, I'm not a big fan of Matt Ryan coming back here and running it back with the Falcons. He had his, he had his opportunities. He lost them all. He lost them all over it, over Matt Ryan. Alrighty, and then this, I'm just getting worse news every day. I mean, I, I want Deshaun Watson to go to Atlanta. That doesn't seem to be happening. I want Taysom Hill to be starting for the Saints, and that doesn't seem to be happening either because here we go. Sean Payton says the Saints have, quote, big interest in bringing Jameis Winston back. Now, that's fine. You can bring him back, but I want to see Taysom Hill be the starter. Those couple of games that he played this season, he impressed me. He impressed me. I don't know if he was impressing Sean Payton. Obviously, Sean Payton sees this man work every day. I only see him when he's out there on the field but I loved everything I saw about him the deep ball accuracy was there the consistency was there going to his actual wide receiver targets were there the running game has always been there that's the one thing that's great about him he's a good dual threat quarterback and you know he takes some big hits and pops right back up so you know the injuries doesn't kind of seem to be you know Taysom Hill's big downfall so I really want to see Taysom Hill take over for Drew Brees. I think Drew Brees is done. I don't think he's officially came out and said it, but everything really kind of points to him being done. Um, but I don't – Sean, if James Winston wants to be there and be the backup, I got no problem with that. But I do want to kind of see Taysom Hill get one season. One, Give me one season. Let's see what he can do with one season. We saw what James Winston can do.
30 for 30, you know, 30 for 30, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions, eight and eight season. That's what he does. Give Taysom Hill a shot because this man, he's been a trooper as the backup. Give him his time here. He can play the quarterback position, I think, really, really good. So we'll see what the Saints do if Drew Brees decides to move on. All righty, and Jared Goff is a little salty this morning. We get this nice little long quote here. Let's just read it, and then we'll talk about it. So here we go. Quote, as the quarterback, as the guy that's at arguably the most important position on the field, if you're in a place that you're not that you're not wanted and they want to move on from you, the feeling's mutual. So Jared Goff's feeling got a little hurt that, you know, the Rams and Sean McVay moved off of him. And I would be a little upset if I was Jared Goff, too. I mean, like, um, I, I've done everything you've asked me to do. You know, I got to the Super Bowl my second year starting here. I've gotten to the playoffs three of the four years that I was starting here. And I won a playoff game this year. I won a playoff game. Y'all forgot about the wild card round. Y'all didn't even want to play me. I stepped up because after I got surgery, that's why I wasn't playing. So, you know, your guy gets knocked out. You wanted to go with John Walford. Oh, he gets knocked out. Then you have to call a little old me again. You know, the backup. Jared Goff, you know, who I've been here. Y'all picked me. Y'all wanted to bench me. And now, you know, I'm your only option. And I went out there. I sucked it up. I did what I had to do. And I won the game. So, and then you're just going to trade me? Trade me straight up for Matt Stafford, who who can't even stay healthy. I have one little thumb injury. This man can't stay healthy. Back problems. He's olding. He's aging. He's aging out of this league. He's never been to the Super Bowl. I have. I have. So, yes, you know, I get Jared Goff being a little upset here. I would be too. Um, did they bail on Jared Goff a little early? I mean, folks, for three of the four years he was with the Rams starting, he got to the playoffs. That's pretty damn good, and they just moved off of him. So, yeah, I can understand Jared Goff's frustration here. And now Sean McVay, he's got a huge, huge burden on him this season. If he doesn't even make the playoffs the first year with Matt Stafford, I think you know Jared Goff you know, instantly kind of wins that kind of matchup of who deserves credit for the Rams' kind of short success over over that four-year stretch, is it the genius Sean McVay? I mean, folks, do you remember that? Remember that narrative? That first season where they got to the wild card game with Jared Goff? Uh, you know, everybody was calling him, you know, the the best coach. He was going to be the next Bill Belichick. He was going to pass Bill Belichick. This was going to be the new guy. And then they got to the Super Bowl, and then they lost. And then that narrative started to dwindle a little bit. I didn't forget that narrative. So, uh, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to put that huge narrative early on somebody's career, we're going to have to hold you to that, and we're going to have to dissect it for the rest of the career. So, uh next season's going to tell a lot with Jared Goff with the Lions and Sean McVay with, uh, um, I just lost his name, Matt Stafford. So that will be interesting to see. And I can definitely understand Jared Goff's frustration here. Um, alrighty. So how much home field advantage or how much is home field is advantage in the Super Bowl? Well, yes, you get to play at home, but you don't get to do all your normal things. So here we go. We get a nice little uh, press release here by the Bucks. Let's read it and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Here we go. Quote, the firing of the cannons after big plays is a tradition that defines what it means to be a Buccaneer fan and serves as a signature element of our home game experience at Raymond James Stadium. However, we all also acknowledge and understand the NFL's position with regards to maintaining the integrity of a neutral site atmosphere for Super Bowl 55. While the cannons may not fire in their typical fashion, we look forward to showcasing parts of our tradition while working with the league's guidelines. So, no big pirate ship booms, no cannons going off when Brady throws it to Scotty Miller one yard down the field and then Scotty Miller takes it 28 yards himself. No big cannon booms in that. Um, so, you know, you don't get all your home field stuff. You don't get all that. You don't get your, you know, your only fans, yeah, only the Bucks fans there. You don't get to fire your cannon when only your team is doing good. Um, I am interested to see what these cannons are going to do because, you know, they have to kind of do something for both teams, right? So uh, we'll have to look out for that. Uh, you know, maybe bring this up in your Super Bowl party. You watch takes by fans. Nobody else is really talking about this quote. You can bring it up. You're like, yeah, those cannons, they're not going to fire when uh, when just the Bucks are doing good. You know that, right? This is, you know, they, they get home field, but they don't get actually home home field, right? Uh, so, yeah, this would be interesting to see what these, uh, what these, uh, what these cannons are going to be doing uh, in the Super Bowl. 
Um, all right, let's keep moving on here. Um, just a quick little story here. Myers, Myers Leonard for the Miami Heat is once again a <laughs> season-ending injury. I mean, he played, what, like four games in the bubble last season, and then that was it. And now, once again, he is here for this Heat team. Not playing. He hasn't played all season. Season ending shoulder surgery. So Myers Leonard, I'm I'm a little bit a little bit of a fan of him of what I saw from him in his brief time playing. But um yeah, once again, just this heat team is deep, but uh some of their deeper parts, Udonis Haslam's just kind of, you know, uh just a kind of coach now, really, even though, you know, he's still a player and uh, Myers Leonard can't uh, not be injured. So he's out for the season, unfortunately. Alrighty, and then we get this little clip. Blake Griffin, they just lost last night, and now he's angry. Why is Blake Griffin angry? He rips his jersey right here going into halftime, just rips it right open. What are we doing here, Blake? You're not the best player on your team. Is that why you're angry? Are you angry that you 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 take more threes than you have rebounds per game? Are you mad that you're like the fourth leading scorer on your team? What, what what are you angry about? You're not good anymore, man. You're not good. You're not helping your team stop the threes, get down under the glass, get some rebounds, be the big man. But, uh, you know, Blake Griffin just wants to pout on the sideline. I don't know what this is about. Alrighty, then the uh, last story we got to talk about, and it's so unfortunate. John Wall, he's out for today's game. Injury recovery, they call it. Injury recovery. You were playing the last four games. Where was that injury recovery, right? So unfortunate we don't get to see John Wall and Victor Oladipo again. I mean, folks, they're undefeated when they're on the floor together. We're big on the Rockets, but we might not be able to take them in our moneymaker today uh, since he's not going to be playing. So we'll see what the line is. We'll have to adjust it for John Wall being out, and we'll see how we feel then. But a uh, little, uh, little disappointed that this Rockets team isn't all healthy and all playing together every single game. John Wall is going to be out tonight. Alrighty, those are all the stories that we just kind of need to, need to cover for today. So let's jump into the NBA of what happened last night. We'll quickly kind of preview the games, go a little bit deeper than the st in the stats, do our moneymaker, and then we'll go and uh, watch the first quarter of Bucks Chiefs Week 12 matchup, see what we see. Alrighty, so here we go. Let's start here. Raptors and the Magic and Fred Van Vliet. If y'all not heard, that man just dropped 54 points last night. Led him to the win. Um, that was really it. Just Fred Van Vliet being good, being great. And, you know, we know this from Fred Van Vliet. We've seen games by him but like this in the bubble, you know, years ago, two years ago, last year, this year. He's still balling out. It's just not consistent. But, you know, we know he has the ability to go and drop 50-plus points if he wants to. And, uh, you know, he just, uh, he just did it this game against the Magic. Um, Aaron, Aaron Gordon's first game out for his next three to five weeks. Is that a coincidence that the Magic flounder here? Yeah, no, not really, actually. <laughs> Alrighty, the best game of the night, Clippers and the Nets, and it lived up to all the hype, folks. This was a fantastic game. Really looked like the Clippers were just going to blow them out in the first quarter, but this Nets team, I mean, folks, they got shooters everywhere. They got shooters everywhere, and that's what they did, especially in the fourth quarter. And, you know, I uh, this narrative that the Nets don't play defense, I mean, I was saying it myself. I was starting to believe the hype a little bit of that narrative, but um, I think we have to just expel that narrative. We have to to get rid of those Cavs losses I think we just get those out of the window because we just saw you know superstars stepping it up I mean KD Kyrie Irving and James Harden all hitting a three in the last four minutes all hitting mid-range jumpers to extend their lead all just being so clutch so yes you don't need defense if you've got great star power great firepower great consistency great clutchness and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant and James Harden may be the three one of like the top three clutchest players if you if if you have to rank the top 10 of the clutchest players of all time, I think you have to put those three into the top 10 somewhere. I don't care where you put them, but they're, they really are clutch. I mean, Kyrie Irving in the finals over, well, who was it, Steph Curry or Clay Thompson, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and James Harden, once again, in the finals over LeBron James. I mean, folks, these are clutch pieces here, and they were on full display last night. So, yes, the Clippers are good. Yes, the Clippers play good defense, but uh, they don't have the three-point shooting. They don't have the consistency of the, you know, just superstars going at. I mean, Paul George can't do what Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden are doing. They, he just can't do that. He's not that clutch. So, um, this Nets team, holy cow, man, they really showed out last night. Great win over the Clippers. 
Pacers, Grizzlies, and I was a little disappointed in the Grizzlies a little bit. Um, you know, this is why we're not too big on John Morant in this squad. He's definitely not as consistent and as a leader as, you know, our boy Ice Trey Young um, with the Hawks. So Grizzlies disappointed us a little bit. They were in our moneymaker. We had them plus five, and they absolutely get blown out here. So a little disappointed here by the Grizzlies, but a good win there by the Pacers, 134-116. to 116. Blazers and the Wizards and the Wizards. I mean, they had a decent game. It was kind of competitive at the end. But, uh, you know, Damian Lillard and the crew get it done, beating them 132-121. So, uh, you know, the the game that Russell Westbrook went crazy on, that was not going to be consistent. And I think we all saw that coming. So, Wizards back to losing. Classic Wizards. Jazz Pistons. Donovan Mitchell is back in his normal form, folks. 32 points, 6 rebounds fantastic and they beat the Pistons and the Pistons we know are not good so this is a good game for the Jazz to win definitely glad they won the game because I'm sick of the Pistons beating top tier teams they're not even good uh, so the Jazz get the win 117-105 and then the last game of the night Warrior Celtics and it was pretty good actually Warriors had a nice little lead for, you know, about the first half, and then the Celtics got the lead and never really let it go. Warriors would get a little close. You know, the game was really close uh, throughout the entire game, but um, <clears throat> Warriors just couldn't get it done. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown doing what they do. The tandem is too good, folks. So... Celtics get the win, 111-107. Warriors were competitive in it, um, but they just can't, uh, they just don't have that second great consistent shooter. I do want to, you know, I mean, Kelly Oubre had a decent game, I believe. We'll double check the stats, but uh, they need something more, more consistent. They kind of have to get the Clay Thompson contribution without Clay Thompson because obviously he's out for the season. Um, so until Kelly Oubre starts to do that, this Warriors team, they're going to be losing, folks, unfortunately. Alrighty, let's go a little bit deeper into the stats now, and we'll start here with the Raptors and Celtics, and we'll start here with the Raptors and Fred Van Vliet, folks. I mean, holy moly, folks, 54 points. Do don't even care about the rebounds and assists, but he had decent numbers there. Three, oh, two assists, three rebounds, three steals, three blocks. I mean, this man was honestly doing everything. Holy cow. And uh, the man hit four from three consistently. 11 of 14 from three. Oh my gosh, folks. I just can't believe the performance, honestly. 54 big old points, just hitting threes consistently. And then you get Kyle Lowry, 14 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds. Nice triple-double with four steals. Four steals. We know this Magic team isn't good, and everybody was getting steals. Holy, yo, look at these steals numbers. Holy cow. They had 14 total. The Magic had four total. <laughs> Unbelievable. So let's shout out these people getting steals. We had Norman Powell with four steals. Pasco Siakam had one. Fred Van Vliet had three. Kyle Lowry had four. DeAndre Bembry. Bem yeah, Bembry. Uh, two steals. Holy cow. 14 steals total. That is honestly impressive. Uh, so, yes, the starters all getting it done here. Kyle Lowry, 14 points. Pascal, Pascal Siakam, 12 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds. Norman Powell, 23 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists. So, this is exactly what you want from this Raptors team. All the starters going absolutely magnificent. Fred Van Vliet going out of his mind, and they get the nice win over the Magic. We'll go to the Magic now. Vucevic, 21 points, 18 rebounds. So finally, he's starting to get back to what he's got to be doing on a game-to-game -game basis for this Magic team to win. Unfortunately, it's coming a little bit too late since Aaron Gordon's out for the next three to five weeks, folks. So you're not going to have your second superstar there. Uh, Evan Fournier, 21 points. James Ennis, only 10 points, though. Gary Clark, 3 points. And then Cole Anthony, 16 points. So, And then you get some solid contribution off the bench with Dwayne Bacon, 15. You know, Dwayne Bacon, let's shout him out. It seems like every game off the bench, he's having a real great success. It's just, unfortunately, this Magic team is not good. But we do see you out there, Dwayne Bacon. Every time we call his name, it's always some you know double-digit points. And that's what we want to see off the bench. Um, and then we get to Chuma <clears throat> Okiki. 10 points, 3 assists. So, Magic, we know they're not a great team. Vucevic has to start stepping it up a little bit more. James Ennis really has to start stepping it up a little bit more. Get those points, my man. But uh, without Aaron Gordon, and until Aaron Gordon kind of returns to vintage Aaron Gordon shape, this Magic team is not going anywhere. 
Alrighty, here we go. Clippers and Nets. And I mean, folks, this was an absolutely fantastic game. If you did not watch it, you missed out, truly. Um, so let's just start with the Nets here. Kyrie Irving, 39 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, just being absolutely clutch. The man shot 65% in 75% from the 3, 6 of 8 from 3. I mean, the man was absolutely clutch. And we know Kyrie. I mean, nobody's doubting the man's talents. I mean, I say that every day. Nobody doubts this man's talent. The man is clutch. The man is great he's just not a number one leader on a team that's it that's the only knock on him he's a number two he's a fantastic number two probably one of the best number twos in the entire NBA history honestly <coughs> um James Harden 23 points 14 assists 11 rebounds triple double for the man and we see him not taking a lot of shots he did take more shots than Kevin Durant but uh you know he is the assister he's the ball facilitator on the floor he, he's came out and said it multiple times we see it every game he's the one with the assist so love what James Harden's doing here really fitting in here with all this talent all this firepower all this star power James Harden is really kind of figuring out so you know we we tip the hat big to James Harden here big Lee James Harden I think he's kind of sacrificing the most coming here and he's making it work love it uh, Joe Harris, 13 points, 3 of 7 from 3. So it's not just the big 3 you have to worry about. Now you start have to worry about James Harris as well. Um, and then Kevin Durant, 28 points, 9 rebounds, just being good. Shot to 80. Five percent. I mean, that's what Kevin Durant does. Just easy money sniper, folks. Do y'all know not know his Twitter handle? Easy money sniper. When you when you put up twenty eight points on eighty five percent shooting, I think you deserve that name. Alrighty, Jeff Green gets in the starting lineup for DeAndre Jordan this game. What did he do? Seven points, four rebounds. DeAndre Jordan off the bench, seven points, six rebounds. So we'll see what happens with that, if this is going to be a continual change here. Um, and then uh, TLC, Timothy Luawe Cabaret, only three points and three rebounds, but only took two shots. So, you know. That explains why the low point production. And obviously when you got, you know, Kyrie Irving for 39, Durant for 28, James Harden with 23, Joe Harris with 13, there's not a lot of more points to be had, folks. So everybody really getting it done for this Nets team. Everybody being good. Joe Harris being, he's better than Danny Green. I mean, Danny Green was like a, the number four on a team. I think you can probably put Jeff or Joe Harris as a number four on the team. I mean, uh, Danny Green is the number four on the Lakers last season. He's the number five here with the 76ers, and he still isn't putting up the production that Joe Harris is. And the Lakers team and the 76ers team has nowhere near the scores of James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and we still see Joe Harris having great contribution, great success here, 13 points, 43% shooting consistently. Danny Green, what are you doing? man I I don't know I I don't know how it always comes back to Danny Green but that's just a man that stands out to me uh, I uh, when I see other players having success in kind of the same role Danny Green's in it infuriates me Joe Harris he's better than Danny Green let's get that right off the rip um, all right, let's go to the Clippers now. Kawhi Leonard, 33 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 50%. Didn't shoot great from 3, 1 of 5, but this is a classic Kawhi Leonard game. Paul George, 26 points, 6 assists, 4 rebounds, shot decently from the field, 46%, 43% from the 3. Um, unfortunately, just not getting it done here, uh, the two superstars. Nicholas Batum, 21 points, 6 rebounds, great night by him. Serge Ibaka, 9 points, 10 rebounds, 3 offensive, still getting it done there. The bench, Marcus Morris, 16 points. Luke Kennard, no points. Zubak, 2 points, 3 rebounds. Lou Williams, 4 points, 5 assists. So a little light on the bench, and I think that's kind of the downfall here. The starters did decently. Reggie Jackson only did 9 points. So that definitely could have been up a little bit more. But, um, you know, from the stars, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they did what they're supposed to do. So that is a kind of a silver lining if you want to look for one by this Clippers team. It was, you know, Paul George having a classic playoff P game of just not showing up. He, he was decent here. Yes, he had that three-point attempt to tie it up, and it didn't fall, but they called the foul on that play as well, you know, all that stuff, so... Very, very close game. Great game. Came down to the wire. Back and forth in the fourth quarter. And Kyrie Irving, man, that man is good, folks. Holy cow. <laughs> 
Alrighty, let's go to Memphis in the Pacers now. We got, uh, we'll start here with the Grizzlies. Why did they disappoint me? John Morant, 10 points, 5 assists. Trey Young doesn't do that. Trey Young has never had only 10 points. Come on, got to get that up a little bit. Dylan Brooks, 25 points, led the team by far. <laughs> the next highest scorer was Desmond Bain off the bench with 16 points. Come on, John Morant, got to step it up a little bit. That's why we're not big on this Grizzlies team. We haven't seen John Morant take that next step yet. So until he does... This Grizzlies team is just a, it's just an average team here. Nothing real great from really anybody. Dylan Brooks had a good game. 25 points on 50, we can round it up, 56% shooting. I can get behind that. But uh, really nobody else stepping it up too big here. Xavier Tillman, 12 points, 4 rebounds. Brandon Clark, 9 points. Two assists, three rebounds. Kyle Anderson, six points, five rebounds. Just nothing really great here. Um, all right, let's go to the Pacers. <laughs> Sabonis is still getting it done, this man. Um, he's better than Luka Doncic. Translating to wins, same stats? I think so. Uh, Devontae Sabonis here, 32 points, 13 rebounds, 4 offensive, and 5 assists on, holy cow, 86% shooting, 2 of 2 from 3 as well. The man had a magnificent night from the field, and really the entire starting lineup, holy cow, the entire starting lineup here for the Pacers, absolutely magnificent. We'll go through a top down here. Justin Holiday, 10 points. Sabonis, obviously, as we've said, 32 points. Miles Turner, 22 points, 11. 11 rebounds. Jeremy Lamb, 19 points, 5 rebounds. Malcolm Brogdon, 23 points, 7 assists on 56% shooting. Oh my goodness, this shooting percentage. They shot as a team 60%. That is incredible. Truly a great team here by the Pacers. Um, now really the only test for this Pacers team is... Um, we got to see, you know, against the kind of a leader teams, the Nets, the Clippers, the Lakers, the 76ers, the Celtics, the Jazz, the Nuggets. Um, we got to see even the uh, the Bucks. We got to see them against the Bucks, and I think they play the Bucks tonight. So this was gonna be, this is gonna be a big test here. They've done it against the bad teams. They've done it against the mediocre teams. They're here. They're all great. The starting lineup gets it done. They've got the superstar and Sabonis. They've got the pieces. They got the supporting cast. So uh, now the the only thing left to see and judge about this Pacers team is how do they do against the better teams. So we'll see that tonight because I do believe they got the Bucks. All righty, let's keep moving on here. Trailblazers and the Wizards. Damian Lillard is back on track. Gary Trent Jr. is back on track. So I love to see that, and Ennis Cantor ate all day down low, and why? And that shouldn't surprise anybody because we know the Wizards really don't have that much beef. Yes, they have Robin Lopez, but he's not even that really that great. He's the worst Lopez brother. I'm taking I'm taking Brook over Robin, folks. I'm taking Brook over Robin. Robin. Um, alrighty. Um, Damian Lillard, 32 big old points with eight assists. I mean, absolutely magnificent. He didn't shoot well at all. 39% <laughs> from the field, 28% from three, four of 14 from three, but he was. He still put up some points, so we can kind of forgive it a little bit. Gary Trent Jr., 26 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds, 2 steals. Really getting it done. He shot well from 3, 77%, and he shot 50% from the field. And his canter, 14 points, 15 rebounds, 5 offensive, absolutely magnificent. And he's just, you know, eating down low, 6 of 10, no 3s, got to the line only twice, hit them both, but just an overall great game by him. Uh, Rodney Hood, 15 points. Robert Covington, 19 points. Um, yeah, so the team did very well here. We get no um, Derek Jones Jr., unfortunately. Um, so Robert Covington steps up, and he steps up really big here, 19 points and 9 rebounds. So very well done to the starters here. And they even had Carmelo Anthony going vintage Carmelo with the 21 points and 4 rebounds. Didn't shoot well from 3, shot well from the field, and he also put up 21 points off the bench. So uh, great showing here by this um, Trailblazers team, and they still don't even have C.J. McCollum or Nurchic back. So this team will be fine moving forward once everybody's healthy, and they'll be able to kind of make that playoff push I believe currently yeah currently they're still number eight let's refresh this they may have moved up to number seven because the Warriors lost and they did move up to number seven because the Warriors lost and wow look at this the Warriors are now out of the playoffs and the Rockets had the number eight seed love it love it love it so uh big loss there for the Warriors last night and now they are outside looking into the playoffs I know still a lot of games to be played but you know you obviously want to be there when you can <laughs> 
Alrighty, let's talk about the Wizards now. Russell Westbrook, anybody want to guess on his stat line before we call it out? 17 points, 10 assists, 12 rebounds, great triple-double, four turnovers. All right, we can forgive three or four a little bit, a little bit. We can never forgive six, but it is still climbing up a little bit. We see four here, not great. So Russell Westbrook, a decent game by him, a triple-double, doesn't translate to a win, so that's classic Russell Westbrook. Bradley Beal, 37 points, four assists, shot 50% from three, six of 12, and shot 58% from from the field. I mean, Bradley Beal is so freaking good. Um, Robin Lopez is trash out there. Two points, one rebound. What are we doing out there? Right, Rui Hachimura, great game by him. 24 points, five rebounds, shot so well. Three of four from three, 83% overall. Love it. And then we get uh, Denny Avija. 13 points, 7 rebounds. So they've got some decent pieces. They definitely need a better beef down low. Robin Lopez has not been getting it done really ever this entire season. And, you know, we all know Russell Westbrook. So Wizards, they're back to losing. Nothing real great here. Bradley Beal's the best thing about him. So now, you know, we just saw Bradley Beal last, yesterday before the game say that, hey, he doesn't want to be traded. Now they're back to losing. Are we going to get a flip-flop again? What are we going to get here? Is his attitude going to be all pouty? We don't know. So we'll see what happens with this Wizards team. But uh, Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook do not work. Russell Westbrook does not work with anybody. That's the most unfortunate thing I've ever said, but it's true. All righty, here we go. Pistons in the Jazz, and the Jazz getting back on track. Love to see that. They took a little bit of a step back against that Nuggets team. The Nuggets really seem to be the Jazz' only kryptonite, dating back to last season as well. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that and how they do against, you know, the Clippers and the Lakers and the 76ers because if it's just, you know, if it's just a beef of Jokic that they can't handle, that's unfortunate. Rudy Gobert's got to start stepping it up at that point. Uh, but he's usually he's good against everybody else. He can really kind of guard everybody else. Um, Joking, giving that man trouble. So Donovan Mitchell's, uh, you know, not first game back, but, uh, you know, second game back. So, you know, kind of your first game. Let that first game kind of get you tested. And now this is the second game. You should be up to speed. You should be back in your kind of groove. And he was last night. So 32 points, six rebounds, shot really well. Four of seven from three, 58% overall. Mike Connolly still doing great things. 20 points, five assists, four rebounds. Rudy Gobert, nine points, seven rebounds. A little light here. Who was he going up against? Who, who um, Mason Plumley? He got outperformed by Mason Plumley. That's not good there. Rudy Gobert, ooh, not a good sign there. But uh, we can, we, we'll forgive it a little bit, a little bit. He still got the win, so did enough. Uh, Royce O'Neal, 12 points, 13 rebounds. All right, so he was having great success over Blake Griffin. And should anybody be surprised by that? No, no. Blake Griffin's the worst forward in the league. I don't want to hear it anymore. Uh, so Royce O'Neal having great success, grabbing 13 boards. And Bojan Bogdanovic, 18 points, notching as well. So great from the starters. Solid bench from the sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson, 12 points, shot 50%. Only one assist, though, so a little light on him. Joe Ingles, only five. Once again, a little light on him. And Derek Favors, six points. Eh, not too bad there. And Georges Nyang, um, only three points, two rebounds. So starters getting it done. A little light by everybody else, but they kind of escaped because they faced one of the worst teams in the league in the Pistons. Um, all right, let's talk about them very quickly. As we said, we already brought up – or no, we didn't talk about Blake Griffin, but um, I alluded to him in the uh, <clears throat> into the video in our news segment. So we'll tell you what he did. He was the fourth leading scorer, 11 points. One of six from three. Why? Three rebounds. Why are you having more three points attempted than rebounds? I don't get it. Go down there and eat. Run the pick and roll. Contribute. Can you contribute to this team, please, Blake? You're the best person here. You're the main superstar here. Um, obviously, Jeremy Grant's better than you now, but you know you were you were a big name. You were a superstar. You were Lob City. You were half of Lob City. You see what the other half of Lob City is doing? Single-handedly carrying that Thunder team. And really is having great success here with the Suns these last two seasons. And did I also mention he's a lot older than you? So, Blake, please do something here. It, besides pouting on the bench, please. <laughs> uh, Mason Plumlee, 17 points, 14 rebounds. Great game by him. He's having real great success here these last couple of games. So, very well to him. 
Um, and then besides that, nothing else really great here. Josh Jackson, 22 points off the bench, eight rebounds. I'll give it to that man. Very well done. Um, second leading score off the bench. No Derrick Rose playing. So, yeah, I mean, this Pistons team, we know they're not good. They've got some washed-up superstars. Blake Griffin, uh, Derrick Rose hasn't really shown anything great. He's always coming off the bench, and he's having great success off the bench, but he's still not a starter. Not great there. So this Pistons team is not good. Um, truly disappointing because, uh, you know, I thought Blake Griffin and uh, Derrick Rose were really starting to get it together at their end of last season because they didn't make it into the bubble. But, uh, you know, up until then, I thought they were having it all figured out. Um, I was wrong, obviously. Alrighty, and then the last game of the night, the Celtics and the Warriors. Let's start with the Celtics. Jason Tatum doing his thing. 27 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists. Shot 4 of 10 from 3, 47% overall. That's kind of where he is, so classic game by him. Jalen Brown, a little light, only 18 points. He's really got to be with the 20s as well. But they still win the game, so I guess we can forgive it a little bit. Uh, Jalen Brown, 18 points, 10 rebounds. Shot only 1 of 6 from 3. Looking like Blake Griffin out there from 3, 1 of 6. That is the new standard. If you shoot 1 of 6, you're being called Blake Griffin. I see that all the time by Blake Griffin. So you are now Blake Griffin, Jalen Brown, for the day, for the next until the next day. Um, instead of the cash and trash list, we're going to do cash, trash, and then Blake Griffin, which is even kind of worse than trash. So uh, <laughs> look out for that starting next week. If I see one of six from three, you are designated Blake Griffin. Uh, so Blake Griffin here, 18 points, 10 rebounds, one of six shoot, one of six from three. Uh, Kemba Walker, 19 points, seven rebounds, three of nine from three. Not horrible. Not horrible. Um, we've obviously seen better games from Kemba. We've seen worse games by Kemba. Um, so a decent game here. Second leading scorer, so I can get behind that. Um, and then since Marcus Smart is out, look at this starting lineup. They got Daniel Tice and Tristan Thompson together. Kind of worked out a little bit. They were both eating on the reboards. Daniel Tice uh, moving to the forward spot. 8 points, 11 rebounds. Tristan Thompson, 13 points, 8 rebounds. So, I mean, they were kind of getting it done, kind of surprising, honestly. And that's kind of maybe why Jalen Brown didn't have that 20-point game because he had to move to the guard position because that's where Marcus Smart plays. The usual starting lineup are, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, the two forwards, either Daniel Tice, Tristan Thompson, in the center, and then you get Marcus Smart and Kemba Walker, the two guards. So we see a little bit of a shakeup there in the starting lineup so we'll see how that progresses because we know Marcus Smart I think is out for at least like two to three weeks so uh, Jalen Brown's gonna have to learn to live with this uh, new position here um, and then Grant Williams uh, or I, I was trying to do Robert Williams he didn't do anything all game um, Tristan Thompson Daniel Tice both getting it done um, and then Grant Williams off the bench, 15 points. So just the uh, the Celtics just contributing, all getting it done. I don't know if they can beat anybody else but the Warriors. I don't know if they're going to be able to beat a better team than the Warriors, honestly, without Marcus Smart. We'll kind of see how well this Daniel Tyson, Tristan Thompson in the starting lineup work. I'm a little upset that it actually worked against the Warriors a little bit. Um, so we see Draymond Green. I mean, he still had 11 rebounds too. So just a lot of fighting on the glass here. Everybody really getting it done. I can respect it. Even battle here. Um, all right. So Steph Curry, 38 points, eight assists, 11 rebounds. Classic what he does. Seven of 14 from three, 57% from the field. But Kelly Oubre Jr. is still not stepping it up. I don't understand how Andrew Wiggins is having a better season than Kelly Oubre Jr. I don't get that. So I'm super disappointed in him. You know, we were big on this Warriors team for a little bit. And then, you know, since seeing Kelly Oubre Jr. flounder over and over and over and over again. I'm a little over this Warriors team, and it is truly unfortunate. Uh, so um, what else we get here? Andrew Wiggins, uh, very well done. This man, I can't praise this man enough, honestly, for the kind of the turnaround that he's having this season. He's always kind of the second leading scorer, which is honestly crazy. 15 points here, second leading scorer, or third leading scorer, because we get a bench player with 16 points. But uh, still, doing his part on the starting lineup, and I can definitely get behind it. Um, all right, Kevin Looney. I think he's going to be out for a little bit here. Uh, four points, three assists. I think he just got injured this game. Only played 13 minutes. 
And then we see uh, James Wiseman didn't even play this game. So a little light here in the Celtics still are able to get the win. I'm not buying the Celtics team too much right now. Marcus Smart needs to be in this lineup. He does bring a nice kind of beef game. You know, he's kind of smaller, but his three point is really good. Usually, especially in the first quarter, getting, you know, getting out to hot starts. That's what he can do for this team. So we know the Celtics got even worse from last season in the bubble to this season. They got a little worse now since Marcus Smart is out. They were able to beat the Warriors, but they were a little depleted themselves with no uh, James Wiseman out there. So, and Kelly Oubre Jr. is a, more of a liability than anything else. So, yes, the Celtics do get the win. We're not buying them too much right now off this win. We'll we'll buy maybe one share of Celtics stock off, just based off this win for the Warriors, but um, not too impressive here by the Celtics team. Alrighty, that was all the NBA from last night. Let's see what we got going on today, and then we'll give you our money maker. Uh, we got two nationally televised games, which is always great. We get the first one, Pacers and Bucks, and I'm super glad this one is on TV. This is the Pacers' first real matchup since they really kind of established themselves after the Oladipo trade. This needs to be the game that they they got to honestly have to win this game. And if they're getting more than maybe five points, I think we're going to take it in our money maker. Um, so we'll see what that is, but this is going to be a great game to watch. Definitely watch this game if you can, if you're around, if you're free, 7 o'clock on ESPN. What else we get here? Ooh, Clippers Cavs could be a good one. We know the Cavs like to rise to the occasion. Clippers coming off of a loss. Hawks Mavericks hoping the Hawks can beat the Mavericks. They should have no problem. Heat Wizards. This is the chance for the Heat to get or for the Wizards to get back on track. Same thing with really the Heat too, uh, losing their last game in overtime, close fashion. Uh, so this is kind of a must-win game for both these for both of these teams here, Wizards and Heat. This is going to be a good one. We'll take the Heat though. <laughs> we'll take the Heat. I'll tell you right now if it's if I don't have to give up like more than three points, I'm taking the heat. Um, Knicks, Bulls. Mm, all right. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> not too in, not too, mm, nothing to really look forward to in this game. <laughs> Rockets, Thunder, Rockets without Victor or without John Wall. Can they get it done? Hopefully they should be able to. Christian Wood and Oladipo should be able to hold it down. T-Wolves and the Spurs. Spurs should really have no trouble here, folks. We may swallow the points here, honestly. Um, Spurs, you know, a little bit of a skid here, and they should be able to eat in the paint all day. So, uh, Suns Pelicans is the second nationally televised game coming at 9.30 on ESPN. This is going to be a great one, too. Devin Booker, Chris Paul against Zion and Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball. We get to see Lonzo Ball on nationally televised game. So, you know, definitely watch out for him but watch out what the Suns team can do and then the Celtics are on a back-to-back -back against the Kings here we'll kind of see how they fare I mean we know the Kings they've upset a lot of teams they've won games that they probably weren't the favorites or shouldn't have won so you know Celtics on the road in the Sacramento against the Kings that could be an upset and if we're getting a lot of points with the Kings we'll take that right uh we'll take that as well um all right so that's what we got here in the NBA today Let's refresh these lines, get these lines up to the date, see if we get any great value that we can rob Vegas. Our moneymaker has floundered the last two days. Not great. Um, so, yeah, Clippers kind of let us down. And who was the other one? The uh, the Grizzlies. We were riding that wave a little bit, and uh, they got blown out. So, 0 of 2 yesterday on the moneymaker, but, hey, you know, you can only go up from there, right? So, let's see what we get. Oh! Right off the rip, folks. Right off the rip. Pacers, Bucks. Pacers plus eight. Folks, we're taking that. We're buying into this Pacers team for a little bit here. We just saw a, a nice win last night. They're, uh, they are in a back-to-back, -back, which is never really great. Uh, but... They're playing well. Everybody in the starting lineup is playing well. This is their first real matchup. This is the deciding factor. So we'll be we'll we'll be off of them big. I mean, we got power rankings coming up. They're currently in our power rankings. So you know, if you lose against the Bucks and if you lose my more than eight and ruin our money maker, we'll hate you even more. So we'll we'll definitely knock them off. But this is the game. This is a game they need to win at least be competitive. And so we're gonna rock with this Pacers team plus the eight points here today. Um, I think that's solid. Give us the eight. Give us the eight all day. 
Alrighty, 76ers in the Hornets. Wow, this is did we miss this matchup? This is going to be a great one. Um, hopefully, Joel Embiid is playing. I'm assuming he is. He had a couple of extra days rest since their last game that he sat out in, so he should be good to go here. Everybody should be good, good to go with the Hornets. I'm assuming LaMelo Ball is going to stay in the starting lineup. We'll see if that's great. We loved him off the bench. You know, his starting performance wasn't the greatest, but it was his first game. We give Donovan Mitchell a pass from his first game back. We'll give LaMelo a pass for, you know, his first ever start. So, um, yeah. Ooh, Hornets 76ers. Who is going to stop and be down low for the Hornets team? That is the only main concern here. Who is it? Cody Zeller? Is that who we got? Is that their big? Their Hornets? Let me double check. Yeah, Cody Zeller. And he had decent success against, you know, Bam Adebayo, 11 board or 12 boards for offensive rebounds. So, this is a lot of points to give up. Hornets at home. Embiid, you know, first game back, you know, since he had the last game off. We'll see. Um, seven, I think we may rock with it. Hornets at home. I'm buying into them. The three-point shooting is good. Embiid's first game back. We'll see. We'll see. I think we may take the Hornets plus seven. That's a lot of points to give up here. They may not win, but I'll take the seven. Give me the points here. I, if, you, if you're giving me points with a good team, folks, we ate it up with the Hornets. Seven, eight, four. We were getting those points. We'll take another seven here. Alrighty, Mavericks and the Hawks. Very close game here. Hawks plus one and a half. Mavericks minus one and a half. Going to be a close one. We're going to stay away from it. We are internally rooting for the Hawks. We are big on Trey Young and Clint Capella. Um, but the Mavericks, they're skidding a lot. They're going to they're gonna have a great game at some point, and I'm not, and I don't want to be on the losing end of this bet. So one and a half for the Hawks here. They're underdogs at home. Don't do that to Ice Trey, baby. He'll get it done. Uh, so we'll stay away from this game. Rockets, Thunder, Thunder plus 7.5. Once again, we're going to stay away from it because John Wall is not in the starting lineup. That's why we like the Rockets. John Wall, o Oladipo, Christian Wood. That's why we like the Rockets. I don't like the Rockets now that John Wall is not in the starting lineup. I still think they win the game, but I'm not going to bet them. Um, all righty, Clippers in the Cavs. Clippers minus 7.5. We know what the Cavs can do. Clippers are coming off of a loss, so they should be playing a little bit better, and they should win the game, but I'm not going to swallow the 7.5 with the Cavs history. Not great value in my opinion. Knicks, Bulls, once again, Knicks plus two, Bulls minus two. It could go either way. Zach Levine versus the cast of the Knicks. Take your pick. I'm not going to because that's not good value in my opinion. We got two great picks here already. Pacers plus eight and Hornets plus seven. So we'll still rock with that. Wizards, Heat, and wow. I can't believe this. Holy cow. Heat minus nine. Wizards plus nine. Definitely going to stay away from that. I thought we were going to get decently heat, good heat value, like heat minus three, and I think I would have taken it at that point, but I'm definitely not doing minus nine. We know Russell Westbrook has the, you know, he can flip the switch and go for 40. We've seen it. We just saw it two games ago, but we also get the 17 point game. So we get both. We know that. And this Heat team, they are not in the rhythm yet. They're not in this kind of consistent, unstoppable rhythm that we saw in the bubble. Jimmy Butler's first couple games back here. Let's get them acclimated a little bit more. They should win the game, but I'm not swallowing nine. Timberwolves, Spurs, once again, not great value here. Spurs minus eight, and I like the Spurs to win, but to cover, they've been losing. I don't want to. I don't want to swallow eight points with this kind of losing trend that they're on. Yes, the T Wolves are trash, but uh, you know, anything can happen. Suns, Pelicans, Suns minus three, Pelicans plus three and a half. This is going to be a good one as well. I think I am kind of liking Suns minus three a little bit. We know this Pelicans team has a little trouble closing out games just a tad, um, but they're at home. Suns, they've been on a streak. Devin Booker just hit the buzzer beater game winner their last game. Uh, so if it's a close game, could be. So um, I like the Suns to win, but uh, I don't think this is any great value. We already got good picks already. And then the last game, Celtics in the Kings. Celtics minus one and a half. Kings plus one and a half. And uh, not real great value here. Celtics struggling a little bit against the Warriors. Really should not have done that. They, they shouldn't be struggling against the Warriors. They only have Steph Curry. Shouldn't have struggled. So we'll stay away from it because we know what the Kings can do. The Kings, uh, they got some nice uh, some nice wins under their belt. So um, is this what we got? Only two games we're loving? Let's see if we can find a third very quickly. We're not, we won't force anything, but if we, you know, kind of coming back here. Hawks plus one and a half. Like I said, the Mavericks, they can step it up. So we'll see. Um, Rockets, Thunder, that's just too much. Clippers, Cavs, that's just too much. 
All these spreads are real high, and I'm not favoring the points in really any of, you, in any of these. Not taking the uh, Timberwolves plus 8. I wouldn't take the Timberwolves plus 80. I wouldn't take the Wizards plus 9. I wouldn't take the Wizards plus 90. Um, yeah, so no really great value anywhere else. So I guess we're just going to get back on track today with a nice little two-team moneymaker here. Good teams with a lot of points. That's what we're rocking with today. Pacers plus 8. Hornets plus seven. They may not win these games, but these are two teams that really can have a chance at beating any any team on any given night. Uh, they've got that ability, and we're getting a lot of points here. We'll take it. Alrighty. Alrighty, so let's uh, move over to the NFL here, and we're going to be watching the entire game of the Chiefs and Bucks. We're gonna break it down by quarters throughout the next four days. See if we see anything. That's what we're we're just seeing if we're seeing anything. If we're seeing Tyree Kale get explosive and you know go crazy, then that's something that's gonna be pretty. Uh, a pretty big determining factor, and you know who is our final final pick here. Come, uh, come Saturday, come Sunday, come Friday, whenever we give our official last pick. But, uh, you know, they they met each other. They were at home. This is the exact same. Bucks at home against the Chiefs. Super Bowl. Bucks at home against the Chiefs. The Chiefs won at the first meeting, 27-24. Tom Brady had to go put up 14 points in the fourth quarter. Chiefs put up no points in the fourth quarter. Kind of a blowout. So, uh, you know, without further ado, we're not even going to give you, we're not even going to recap the drive charts. We're just going to go watch the film. Let's watch the first quarter of the Bucks and the Chiefs. I'll probably have to cut this out because I'm sure YouTube will uh, flag it. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you know, we're, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. So here we go. Punt. And this should bring us to the end of the first quarter and the end of our first day film study of watching this game throughout the next four days. Alrighty, they're going to repunt. Last play, and this is where we will leave off. 17 nothing at the end of the first quarter with the Chiefs getting the ball back. The Bucks could not sustain any sort of drives here in the first half, in the first quarter. And uh, this is not looking well. So uh, before we get out of here officially for today, let's refresh the Super Bowl line. Last time we checked, it was last Friday, and it was Chiefs minus three. And uh, we see right here, it is now Chiefs minus three. Three and a half people are betting the Chiefs minus three. That's why it has went up. And it's actually real great value here. Look at this, folks. Chiefs minus three and a half is plus 100. Usually when you get it on the money line, it's like minus 121 for both sides, minus 110 for both sides. But this is great value here. Vegas is thinking that this isn't going to happen, that this is not the right bet. That's why it's plus 100 at Chiefs minus three and a half. But, folks, of what we just saw in the first quarter of that matchup in week 12, the Bucks could not. Ha they had no answer for Tyreek Hill. They had no answer for that Chiefs defense. So, with all that being said, on how Tom Brady has played in this playoffs, multiple turnovers, multiple potential turnovers. I mean, folks, we're gonna keep track of them. We saw three potential for the Saints, none, none officially. Three turnovers for the Packers. Those were all designated turnovers. All deserved tur turnovers by Tom Brady. We haven't seen any yet here against the Chiefs in Week 12, but we still got three more quarters to go. So uh, we are still rocking with Chiefs minus three, Chiefs minus three and a half. We like the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl, folks. Still, still. Uh, today is Wednesday, 2 3 at 1 25 p.m., and we are still big on the Chiefs. Um, alrighty, folks, we are going to be back tomorrow, live noon Eastern, watching second quarter action from the Chiefs and Bucks game. What have the Bucks cleaned up since that first quarter? Because we know that the Chiefs only put up 24 points for that game, right? 24, 27, they win by three. So not a lot of more points are scored by the Chiefs in this game. Why is that? Are the Bucks starting to get a hold of that Chiefs defense or that Chiefs offense? So we got a lot of stuff to watch and break down tomorrow live to get us ready for the Super Bowl. Alrighty, folks, we're out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Back tomorrow, noon Eastern live, twitch.tv slash takes by fans. Let's keep watching Bucks and Cheese, folks. That's the only thing that we need to watch to finally solidify our final pick coming up for the Super Bowl. Alrighty, folks, we're out of here.